The assembly will now come to order. The chief clerk will call the roll. Assemblywoman Anderson, Assemblywoman Backus, Assemblywoman Bilbra Axelrod, Assemblywoman Brown May, Assemblyman Carter, Assemblywoman Cohen, Assemblywoman Considine, Assemblyman DeLong, Assemblywoman Dickman, Assemblyman De Silva, Assemblywoman Duran, Assemblywoman Gallant, Assemblywoman Gonzalez, Assemblywoman Gorlo, Assemblyman Gray, Assemblyman Gurr, Assemblyman Haven, Assemblywoman Hansen, Assemblywoman Hardy, Assemblyman Hibbets, Assemblywoman Hardy, Assemblywoman Kasama, Assemblyman Koenig, Assemblywoman LaRue Hatch, Assemblywoman Marzola, Assemblyman MacArthur, Here. Assemblywoman Brittany Miller, Here. Assemblyman C.H. Miller, Here. Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno, Here. Assemblywoman Mosca, Here. Assemblywoman Newby, Here. Assemblyman Wynn, Assemblyman O'Neill, Assemblyman Orrant Liquor, Here. Assemblywoman Peters, Here. Assemblywoman Summers Armstrong, Here. Assemblywoman Taylor, Here. Assemblywoman Thomas, Here. Assemblywoman Torres, Here. Assemblyman Watts, Here. Assemblyman Urich, Speaker Yeager. Here. Assemblywoman Howdigy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May the record reflect we have 42 members present. The record shall so reflect we have 42 members present. That means we do have a quorum. Would members of the assembly and guests please rise? We have the prayer this morning from Chaplain Shea Gilliam, Nevada Air National Guard. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, like you said, Chaplain Shea Gilliam from Nevada Air National Guard is a great privilege to be with you all this morning. Please, if you would, join me in a word of prayer. Compassionate and gracious God, we humbly ask for your blessings and guidance as we gather here to open the Nevada State Legislature. Every man and woman here is an image bearer of your glorious grace and has been appointed by you to love and serve the citizens of this great state. As we begin this session, we ask for wisdom, clarity, and a deep sense of responsibility to guide their deliberations and decisions. May they always keep in mind the well-being of the people of Nevada, and may their efforts be directed toward the common good. May they work together in the spirit of cooperation and respect, setting aside their differences for the greater good of all, and maximizing their commonalities to propel us into further greatness. We ask for your blessings upon the governor, Lieutenant Governor, the members of the Senate, and the Assembly, and all those who serve the people of Nevada. May they be guided by your grace, and may they be strengthened by your wisdom. We offer this invocation in humility and gratitude, trusting in your infinite wisdom and love. It's by the name that is above every name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Order Business 2, reading and approval of the journal. Carson City, Monday, May 1st. Assemblywoman Howdy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to end with reading of the journal, journal and allow the speaker and chief clerk to make any necessary corrections and addition. You've heard the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. Order of business eight, motions, resolutions, and notices. Assemblywoman Howdigy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the persons as set forth on the Nevada Legislature's press accreditation list of May 2nd, 2023 be accepted as accredited press representatives that they be assigned space at the press table in the assembly chamber, that they be allowed the use of appropriate broadcasting facilities, and that the list be included in this day's journal. You've heard the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. Motion carries. We'll go to order of business 12, general file and third reading. Senate Bill 132, enters by Senators Pazina et al., Assemblyman O'Neill et al., an act leading to insurance prohibiting discrimination against a living organ donor in a policy or contract of life insurance, life annuity, or health insurance, and providing other matters properly laid there too. The people of the state of that are represented in Senate and Assembly. Do an act as follows, Section 1, End of Section 1, Section 18, End of Section 18, End of Bill. Are there any amendments to Section 1 or the bill as a whole? There are none. 
remarks. Assemblywoman Howdigee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senate Bill 132 prohibits discrimination against a living organ donor with regard to any policy or contract of life insurance, life annuity, or health insurance on the basis of that person's status as a living organ donor. Are there any further remarks? Seeing none, the chief clerk will open the roll. Would anyone like to change their vote? The chief clerk will record the vote. There are 42 ayes, zero nays. The bill having received a constitutional majority, declare it passed and order transmitted to the Senate. Order business, under order business 13, unfinished business of the preceding day, there being no objection, the speaker and chief clerk will sign Senate concurrent resolution number three. That takes us to order of business 15, remarks from the floor. And I assume we have a few today. We'll start with Assemblywoman Howdigee. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very excited to have with me two former Assembly Majority Leaders, if they would please rise. I had the pleasure of serving with both of them. And my predecessor is here, a former Assembly Majority Leader, Teresa Benitez-Thompson, who served in the Assembly from 2010 to 2022, serving as the Majority Leader from 2016 to 2022. She received her master's degree from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, and earned her bachelor's degree from UNR. She has four amazing children and now serves as the Chief of Staff to Attorney General Aaron Ford. And I know this is very weird for us because there's so many of us female leaders in here, but uh, for Former Assemblywoman and for, uh, Majority Leader Teresa Benitez Thompson was only the second female to serve as Majority Leader in this body. I also have with me former Majority Leader Paul Anderson, who served in the Nevada Assembly from 2012 to 2017, serving as the Majority Floor Leader in 2015 and the Minority Leader in 2017. He received his bachelor's degree from Chapman University and now serves as the Senior Vice President of Industry Government Affairs for Boyd Gamey. Please help me make them feel welcomed. Assemblyman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have the real honor today. Here, let me help you get up. You all right? <laughs> okay. You can just put your hands right there for balance. Okay. Peg told me to do that, by the way. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in all sincerity, though, I truly do have the honor to represent former colleague and a member of this esteemed body, Dr. Randy Kerner from Assembly District 26. Dr. Kerner served three terms, 11, 13, 15, and several special sessions in between. He is former chair of Commerce and Labor. He's a former corporate executive, IGT, and he served in the 82nd, 101st. Okay, 101st Airborne in Vietnam. I ask this body to welcome him. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Assemblywoman Miller. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I as well have two former majority leaders sitting with me. Well, one is officially sitting with our current Speaker Yeager, but I will introduce them both. So I have first, um, former Majority Leader and former Chair of Ju Assembly Judiciary, William Horn. I know you see him around the building as well because he's still engaged and active in the process. And former Majority Leader, then Speaker Asagera, who is also still in the building and engaged in the uh, po policy making process. So please everyone welcome them here today. Assemblywoman Peters. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I have with me uh, Brooks Holcomb, who is a representative from Assembly District 24 back in the 2000s. And I, I hope the body will help me make him feel welcome. Assemblywoman Hardy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Um, I feel very blessed today to have two special guests who served honorably in this body. And not only were, did they serve, they are, I also consider them very good friends. Um, first is David Brown. He served in 2004 to, two, or 2000 to 2004 um, in Assembly District 22. So he is a direct um, predecessor of mine. Um, I also had the privilege to work with him in the Las Vegas Justice Court, where he currently uh, serves as a hearing master and, and got to know him there. And as I said, he's, I consider him a good friend to this day. And then next is uh, Jill Tolls, who was a former representative of Assembly District 25. I had the privilege uh, to serve with her in the 2019 and the 2021 session, as well as all of the special sessions. Um, she currently serves as the executive director of the Gwynn Center. And I, Jill has become just not only a colleague, but a very special friend. Her and I went through some pretty tough times in both of those sessions, and um, she was such a, a, a great support to me and I admire her dedication, her leadership, um, her respect for the office that she held and the way that she legislated. And I, I just learned so much from her. And I, I can truly say that the bond that I have with her will, has and will extend beyond the walls of this building and our, our service here to this state. So please um, help m us, uh, help me make them feel welcome today. <laughs> Assemblywoman Brown May. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also have two very distinguished guests with me here today. Gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind standing up. Thank you for joining us. So I'd like to rec start over. I would like very much to introduce you to the Honorable Robert Haney, who served in this distinguished body in the 1970s. We're just gonna leave it at that. 1975. I won't tell you how old I was then. <laughs> I'm very happy to have him here with us today. Uh, while we don't share a district, we do share a legacy, and I'm very honored to be able to be in this body, knowing that he served his term here with us a previous. But I also have with me today Mr. Dave Howard, who is a previous Assistant Secretary of State at the time when Howard Hughes was still running banana airplanes. Um, we are very happy to have them. If you'll please make both of them feel welcome today. Assemblywoman Dickman. Sorry. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. I am honored today to have with me um, the Honorable Robert Rusk. Um, Bob served two terms, and he was the minority leader in the 61st session. So I'm not going to say anything about age, but... <laughs> it's awesome to have him back here. He also served eight years as a county commissioner, and um, he represented, as I said, South Reno, and so he is currently enjoying life as a rancher in Washoe Valley. I'm so happy to have him back, and wish you would all make him feel welcome. <laughs> Assemblyman Watts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am joined today by the Honorable Amber Joyner, who represented Assembly District 24 up here in the north. Uh, she served in both the 2015 and 2017 legislative sessions. Uh, and uh, among other things, one of the things that uh, I, I am very uh, happy about is that she has been running the internship program uh, helping provide wonderful interns from the University of Nevada, Reno to uh, 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 work with us in this body and uh, uh, across the legislature, including my current attache, uh, who started, uh, served as an intern uh, during the 2021 uh, legislative session. Will you please join me in making her feel welcome? <laughs> Assemblywoman Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
I'm honored to have the Honorable Mr. Robert Benkovich, a former uh, assemblyman from the same district I have the honor of, Assembly District 32. Uh, he served in 1975, I think with the colleague of, of, uh, from Assembly District 42 over there. So we have two of the same, same uh, sessions here in the, in the room with us. Uh, Mr. Benkovich came to us via Pennsylvania. He came to work on his PhD and the Nevada bug bit him and he's never left. And so he got his PhD at the University of Nevada, Reno in social psychology. He is the proud father of five children, nine grandkids, and uh, resides in Virginia Foothills. And I'm honored to have him here with us today. Thank you. Assemblyman Urich. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my privilege today to welcome back to the People's House former Assemblyman Glenn Levitt, uh, representing District 23. He served two terms, 19, uh, 2019 and 2021, uh, and has quite frankly become a very dear friend of mine and a mentor even in helping me kind of figure all of this stuff out. So if you'll help me welcome him back to the People's House. Assemblyman Gray. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Today I have uh, two uh, former uh, legislators from Assembly District 39. First is a very good friend of mine and a uh, guy I've known for a long time. We both ran our very first races at the same time when I was running for county commission and Jim was uh, running for, uh, for the Assembly and God, that's been more years than I can think about now, but uh, Assemblyman Wheeler served uh, five terms in this body and uh, served as the Assembly Minority Speaker. And near and dear to my heart, he is also an Air Force veteran, before I was born, but he's still an Air Force veteran. <laughs> and then our very first Assemblyman from Assemblyman, Assembly District 39, Assemblyman Kelly Kite, and uh, he's a, a great man as well, and you're still living in, in a in Minden. So please uh, join me in welcoming these two back. They both served uh, honorably and uh, love their state. Thank you. <laughs> Assemblywoman Newby. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I am very honored to introduce uh, my guest today, go ahead and stand up, Stephanie Goodman, uh, who is here with us today uh, to commemorate Problem Gambling Awareness Day. Um, Stephanie currently serves as the Executive Director of the Dr. Robert Hunter International Problem Gambling Center, where she's been responsible for developing the, organizational's comprehen the organization's comprehensive budget and financial operations. She has worked to cultivate relationships with the gaming industry, community stakeholders, politicians, and related businesses, engaging with community groups to provide awareness training for various businesses and organization. She's also a small business owner. She is the owner and founder of SCBG Advertising, um, bringing many years of experience in advertising and branding, as well as her expertise in community outreach and education to that. And uh, I am so excited to have her here with us. I've known Stephanie from her life prior to that as the chief of staff to Mayor Oscar B. Goodman, which is where we met so many years ago. And I'd just like to ask you to make her feel welcome. Assemblywoman Kasama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have two guests that I would like to introduce. And um, Ted, if I could have you uh, stand up. So Ted Hartwell, he is the, um, he works with the community engagement for the Nevada Council on Problem Gambling. And uh, our state is rich with our industry for um, our, our casinos and our resorts, but we have those that sometimes succumb to the challenges of, of that industry as well. And we wanna make sure that we support those that um, you know, may, may have issues with problem gambling. And we're so glad that we're, you're here. We're so glad that you support um, the organizations that support uh, our people here in the state that need help with that. So please make him feel welcome. 
I also have a very special guest that I would like to introduce. This is Miss Helen Foley, and she served in the assembly from 1981 to 1982 when there were only five women in the group. And then she served in the Senate from 1983 to 1986, one of only two women that were serving in that body at the time, and she was the youngest woman ever elected to the Senate. And so how times changed, but now our assembly has over 50% women, so she was a trailblazer for all of us, and I appreciate that so much. Not only that, now she's in the lobbying world, and, you know, once we're elected, we understand how important our lobbyists are because they carry the historical knowledge for all of us on the bills and the things that we've worked on before. And we, we all um, look to many of our lobbyists to be educated on things that have happened in the past. And Helen has been a lobbyist from 1987 on and was inducted into the Lobbyist Hall of Fame. And so I consider her a dear friend, and I have enjoyed sharing wine and breaking bread with her as well, and she's very good for that as well. Let's let, make her feel welcome. Thank you. Assemblywoman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is a great honor today to introduce one of my predecessors, former uh, minority leader in this house. This is the Honorable Pat Hickey. Uh, Pat Hickey served in this house from uh, 96 to 98, and then he served again for eight years from 2010 to 2016. Six years, six years, eight years total, six years. Um, so to it means he served two different times in two different decades in two different centuries. <laughs> just, just, just saying. Just saying. Just saying. That does qualify you officially as an old timer. <laughs> after, after doing time here, quote unquote, here uh, in the People's House, uh, he served on the uh, State Board of Education. And uh, recently, he uh, penned his first book called Sage and Spirit. Get it on Amazon this fall or at a bookstore near you. This is his second book. Yeah, second book. Well, I'm in that one, so get that one. I'm in this one. This agent, I'm in that, so get that one. And then just for a, a, a moment of full circle, uh, one of the first times I was on this floor, I actually sat as a guest of uh, the Honorable Pat Hickey, so now I'm honored to have him sit as mine. So welcome to the People's House. Let's make him feel home. <laughs> Assemblywoman Gallant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So today I have Honorable Bob Weiss. He served from 1975 to 1979 with also a special session in 1980. So I was born the year you were serving. <laughs> and interestingly enough, he was the two-time minority, Republican minority leader. Um, and we do have the same district number. However, in the last 45 years, it has gone from the north all the way to the south, so we couldn't be on more opposite sides of the state, um, but still experience what it's like to be in a minority. So that's been nice to <laughs> talk with you about. We're carrying on that tradition. Um, he currently lives in Carson, and um, I'm so pleased that he's joined us today, so I'm hoping everybody can make him feel welcome. Thank you. Assemblyman Wynn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have the honor to introduce uh, my guest, the Honorable uh, Danny Thompson. Uh, I first met um, the former Assemblyman uh, with my current role as a member of the Transportation Resources Advisory Council, or committee, one of those things, um, in Clark County. And um, the Honorable Danny Thompson served as the vice chair of that uh, organization. He also served five term in the People's House from 1980 to 1990. Um, and he was the chair of the Assembly Committees on Government Affairs, as you know, is the hardest working committee of the Nevada Assembly. Um, so, you know, I am very, very uh, honored that he chose to uh, sit with me today. Uh, he spent um, 20 years with the F AFL CIO with serving as their secretary and treasurer. And I just have to say thank you to the Honorable Danny Thompson because when I was uh, starting my journey to, to run for office last year, he was one of the first people 
that reach out to me and offer his support um, and guidance. And I appreciate his um, mentorship. And I hope that uh, uh, you all can help me welcome him back to the People's House. Assemblywoman Gorlo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With me today, I have the former Assemblywoman, Susie Martinez from District 29? 12. 12. We only lived together for two sessions. I should know that. <laughs> Go ahead and stand up. Um, as I mentioned, she was my roommate for two sessions. Really glad to have her back. She was also recently elected as the first female executive secretary treasurer of the AFL-CIO. So please help me make her feel welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno. <laughs> yeah, that'd be you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my honor to have sitting with me today um, former Assemblyman Eugene Collins, who represented Assembly District 6, and his son, Mr. Lou Collins. Um, yes, you get to stand up. Gosh. Mr. Collins not only served here, he was involved in establishing the first business incubator in historic West Side. And during that period, he was actively involved in passing the City of Las Vegas Redevelopment Plan and was the first African-American president of the Sarah Allen Credit Union, and he continues to be a great and inspiring activist in our community today. Help me make him and his son feel welcome in our house. Assemblywoman Mosca. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very proud to have Andrew Martin with me today, who used to serve in our house of representing Assembly District 9 and is the former Clark County Democratic Party chair and was here during the 2013 session. Please make him feel welcome. <laughs> Assemblyman Gurr. Can never get that thing to work. Well, I'm extremely honored and uh, pleased to see former Assemblyman John Ellison here. Would you come up, stand up, John? He needs no introduction. His wife, Wendy's with him. Would you stand too, please? But I will give a little introduction, background to him. I don't have my glasses on, so I may, may, may read this wrong. He was first elected to the Assembly in November 1874. Oh, that's not you. <laughs> And he served until 1876. <laughs> John served six sessions in this, in this building for us. He served from 2010 to November 2012, 2022. He was Speaker Pro Tem in 2015. He also was Speaker Pro Tem during the special session of 15 and 16. Minority Whip uh, of the Rurals in 2017. The Assembly Deputy Minority Leader in, of the North in 2019. He uh, also chaired government affairs and he served in the city of Elko, in the county of Elko. He spent better than 30 years doing public service. Give John a big hand, please. <laughs> Assemblyman DeLong. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm pleased to have uh, one of my uh, predecessors here, uh, the Honorable Sharon Engel. She served in this house for four terms, starting in uh, 1999, I believe. And the interesting fact is she actually started serving in District 29, but with redistricting in 2000, the legislature saw fit to move her district to Vegas. And so then she got to finish out her next three terms in District 26. So please make her feel welcome. Assemblyman Koenig. So I have the honor and privilege today of sitting with the Honorable Patty Cafferata. And Patty is true Nevada blue blood. Her mother, Barbara Vukanovich, was the first woman elected to a state, a federal office, and she served in the U.S. House of Representatives. 14 years. For 14 years. Then in 
1978, Ms. Cafferato was elected to the assembly here in Nevada. Google said 1978. It was wrong by two years. She's, she was elected in 1980. Served one term, and then in 1982, she was the first woman elected to a state constitutional office as the Nevada State Treasurer. So her mother was the state the first woman ever elected to the federal, federally, and she was the first woman elected here, on, here in the state. Um, and then now she is serving as a deputy public defender with the state public defender's office. So she's still going strong and still active. If we could welcome her, please. <laughs> I think we have recognized all of our alumni, but just want to make sure if you have someone at your desk that has not yet been introduced, if you could hit your button, please. And just want to take a moment to welcome everybody back to the People's House. This is always a special day. Uh, we're delighted that you're here. Uh, we do have a couple of other order business. 15 we will go next to Assemblywoman Summers Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if any of you have heard of something called the Cajun Two-Step. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about it. So there's two versions. One is a seasoning. It's a blend of spices that's commonly used in Cajun cooking. This seasoning typically includes paprika, cayenne pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and black pepper. But there's another Cajun Two-Step, and it is, um, a dance, it is primarily categorized as one of the three dance steps to Cajun music. The other two are the Cajun jitterbug and the waltz. I tell you these fun facts because today is the birthday of one of our colleagues in Assembly District 20. And our colleague loves to dance and particularly the Cajun two-step. Now, we don't have any dance lessons in this building, but I got him a little something something. Uh, some things with some spices uh, that might resemble the seasoning packet of the Cajun two-step. And I hope that that, along with the treats that will be available for you all to snack on tomorrow in the um, caucus room, because today we have a, a luncheon, but I hope that you will join me in helping our colleague and Assembly District 20 celebrate a special birthday. Uh, before we conclude today, I would uh, direct your attention to the video screens. We will have a tribute to those we have lost.
We thank them all for their service, and certainly our hearts go out to their families and their loved ones. Any other order of business 15 before we wrap up this afternoon, I believe? Assemblywoman Howdigy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Some quick announcements for the floor before we recess. I would like to remind everyone who is here for Alumni Day that upon the adjournment of floor, we have a luncheon today at the Nevada State Rail Railroad Museum. So I hope to see everyone there to break some bread together. We also have Problem Gambling Awareness Day. I would like to remind the body that we will be recessing until 4.45 this evening, and we will convene here to hear the joint session addressed by Congresswoman Dina Titus at 5 p.m. And I would like to remind everyone that at 7.30 today, we have our biannual Donkeys versus Elephants Basketball Classic. So please remember to buy your tickets. It's for a great cause, and we will see you there. Should be an exciting game today. <laughs> uh, tomorrow is Apprenticeship Day. We have the American Beverage Association Day. Nevada Nevada Energy, IBEW, and the Nevada Building Trade Stronger Together reception will also be held tomorrow. And tomorrow we also have a joint address by Congressman Stephen Horsford at 5 p.m. With that, Mr. Speaker, I move that we stand in recess until 4.45. Assemblywoman Howdy has moved that the Assembly stand in recess until 4.45 p.m. today. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. We are in recess.